Hey all, so in this lecture we will see how to handle timers in JMeter. Okay, so basically where the timers will come into picture. Now for example, you have some 50 users uh, with which you are putting load on application. Okay, but in real time situation, not 50 users will simultaneously accept one request right so for example uh, you want to click on customer care link fine so in might be in one or two minutes there may be 50 users who are hitting that URL but hit uh, in on one second hitting 50 users is not accurate behavior because very, very rarely it happens so if that happens in 2-3 minutes, okay, then we can agree. You can say that uh, customer care link is clicked 50 times in 60 seconds, in 1 minute, fine. But customer care link is clicked 50 times in single second. That might not be a accurate you know, real-time behavior. But still people go with that kind of situation to actually get the load and see how many bytes it is returning and how much time it's taking. But if you want to actually mimic some near to real time behavior, you can go ahead and put some sleep between each threads. Now, for example, now if I am using 10 users, after completion of one user, you might go and put a sleep for 2-3 seconds. Okay. So, for example, uh, once you complete the end to end uh, script, database will get update, right? assume that you are posting a new transaction and posting or purchasing some item and now currently there are four items of that product okay so one guy went and purchased it fine so it might take a few seconds in database to update so that the four counts should come now down to three because one user got purchased okay so if four people accessing at a time then you know, there might be cause of actually uh, getting a proper data so in these situations you want to put a load but uh, with a kind of just spaced uh, what you say a uh, kind of gap sleep between the two threads okay so if i run for 10 threads after running a single thread you know you have to take a two or three seconds time to start the other thread so that database will get updated properly within just minute seconds and you are good to go with another thread okay in as i told you uh, timers will not be used much in actual load testing because people go in general with this kind of data putting load together and they get the metrics but there are situations where we are forced to put a sleep as database is taking few seconds to get update Okay. In such a case, how to make your thread sleep for 2-3 seconds? That is the challenge there. Fine. So, until unless you work, you cannot understand where exactly you need to go with timers. So, it all depends upon application specifics. In some cases, you need to go with that because of code uh, written at the back end. Fine. So, let's see. Let's uh, write a prop. Uh, one a normal script and we will put a timer and we will see in the results how much gap how many seconds it is waiting before the other thread starts okay so yeah let me record the script 7070 and let me go with record controller itself put it group in a new controller add suggested excludes and start yeah so go back to firefox and hit this URL again fine so this time I log in into the application fine I click on flights and yeah continue let's continue with this okay and finally we get a page saying thank you for booking through web tours Okay, this is the confirmation page. So I'll go and stop the recording now.
okay so is it recorded it seems there are only okay we got it here now i'll create a thread group add thread group and i'll cut this both from here and i paste it in my thread group so that we can execute it right so let me add uh, this time we'll go with the listener call view results in a table because we need to watch this the start time and stop time right so this will be the sufficient one okay so yeah i guess we can run this now and see let's save the timers okay 15 17 and again 15 you need to see oh let me start with few more threads then only i'll understand right so one user let's go with 10 times okay let it a loop for 10 times that would be with me okay run them again and now we can see uh, 15 and again this is the second time it started okay this is second loop calculate the time here 15th minute to second second and 15th minute sixth second okay sorry it's basically 15th hour 15th hour two seconds first thread started second thread started at where is that here at six second because same request started again that means one loop is done so second second six seconds totally four seconds it taken uh, for execution until sixth second it was still processing the first request only immediately it started a second request okay and now for example assume that when there is a product with the four items at this moment at sixth second 560th millisecond product got sold so within immediately within 10 milliseconds one other guy come uh, came and trying to access it so if there is a database loophole where it takes uh, three to four seconds and within that time this guy again started and he uh, for him also it shows as a four because database is taking still to update there okay and then if we try to access the same four number somewhere the script will start failing fine so in that case no, I'm just giving a situation when you came, when you come across this kind of situation in your application, when you are, are testing on performance, then you can just put a sleep. Fine. Now, if you feel that putting a three second sleep will work, uh, then we we'll select. Okay. Now you just note down the time right now at second second and next it says sixth second. So totally four seconds gap between okay four seconds took to complete each thread so if you put the timer now four plus the sleep time whatever you give that much duration will be there between the two requests okay don't confuse that it's already taking four seconds this four seconds is to run the first thread immediately it started the second thread okay there is no uh, gap at all to actually uh, to make you realize if i add a few uh, sleep here with three seconds now 4 plus 3 total 7 seconds time should be taken between the each thread let's add timer now right click add click on timer and these are different timers available for us constant gaussian random poisson random you know these are based upon calculations okay uh, i'll explain you one by picking gaussian random timer then you will understand what all this about so let's go with a constant timer first and it says by default it has given us thread delay 300 milliseconds that means three seconds basically it delays uh, for three seconds for execution fine 300 milliseconds then let's keep 300 milliseconds thread delay and let's start the script again let it be fine place it any uh, place it at the end or at the a top as I make it a first so that once this thread loop is completed uh, control will come here and it wait for 300 milliseconds and then starts execution 
okay so let me delete this as well and i'll run it again okay so 54th and you can see that earlier it was 4 and now it was 7 got it right you can see that 54th second and 2 you can get approximately 8 so 4 seconds for completing the thread and thereafter it took uh, this 300 milliseconds to finish up the rest execution so that's the time gap you can observe between the previous thread and now if you delete it again this will be reduced okay click on remove uh, run it again Fifteen fifty seventh second and yeah see that this now again it's four seconds only 57 at first second it's 3.54 seconds only it has taken earlier it was 7 because we have deleted constant timer got it so that's how you can check the timers between each thread so you are just putting a pass for a mild uh, few mild seconds uh, to make application stable fine so next thread group uh, next thread what you can see here is oh, sorry next timer is Gaussian random timer so this is basically 300 milliseconds is a constant and this deviation alters for every thread for example if you provide total uh, thread to run for 10 times for second thread it might take 50 seconds that means 300 plus 50 it takes 350 seconds and next time it might take 70 seconds so this is constant and the value this will be changed between 0 to 100 uh, one time it may take 300 plus 10 310 next time it might take 50 350 every time you add this 300 this is the constant delay thereafter this is the deviation it will keep on changing this is the random number okay so basically here we are rather than giving a constant a timer we are just uh, putting a random value 20 30 this will this will deviate but this is a constant it's up to you if you want to go with this timer by putting a random slip you can go with Gaussian random timer if you want a constant timer if you want to use then just go with the constant timer there are still the timer other timers available here you can see Poisson random timer which we have their own kind of uh, you know definition for it and there is some calculation lambda calculation with which it will actually get the uh, sleep 300 plus with some formula you can get that it might be 320 340 uh, you can see what Poisson formula you have to get this output okay I'm not that good at math to say you what Poisson value it gives so it's all ultimately it's end up with a calculation and gives us a timer what how many seconds you need it's a constant or Gaussian random or Poisson or whatever it may be fine so that's how you can put a sleep between the threads and mimic the original behavior of your application but as I said to you this will not be used much in practical but still people will go with this if they have any dependencies with their application fine so that's it about the timers and we have one more timer called constant throughput timer which we will see in the coming session. Thank you.